Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on multi-plant workflow. So let's just go ahead and look at the images that we're going to be analyzing today. So really, I took this picture of some tomato plants that I have going outside, some solo cups, and we're going to get it to output some different uh, things. So right now, uh, we're going to run through the multi-plant multi workflow. And let's sign that up. Also, just go ahead right now and go into your directory. Shift, right click, and click. Sorry. Open partial window. Okay. Now let's go ahead and view this step by step a little bit. So step one is pretty simple. We want to figure out if it's a night image. If it's a night image, then we're going to do a certain thing. Some images were captured at night for certain people's data sets. I don't know why, uh, but some people do. Now, we're going to have to white balance the image. I personally didn't white have anything white balanced in this image. So let's go ahead and check that out again. Uh, in their documentation, on their uh, website, Let's see, their image has these little corrected white dots. We're not we're not doing anything like that. Okay, so we just have this. This, just these little peppers. Okay, so we can still do reason of interest, and that'll just use the whole image to white balance everything. Now everything's a little bit off kiltered, so I'm going to rotate the picture. About 90 degrees. Okay. Now that's rotated 90 degrees. We're going to shift the image so that it's a little bit lower and it can work. Okay, so we're going to show you what 90 degree image looks like. And we're going to work with that. Oh, by the way, this script is available at my GitHub. Um, if you run the script right off the bat with their stuff, it won't always work. So I've went ahead and debugged everything and done it for you. So let's see what happens in each individual step. First one, that's after it's been white balanced. Now let's shift the image. We've shifted it down. It's about 300. What's that shifted? Right here. Okay. Now we've rotated it 90 degrees. Now that's what the image looks like now. And it has ID'd the object. So let's go ahead and look at that part of the script. Okay. So we're going to convert the image from an RGB color space to an LED color space. This green magenta thing might have to be because there are more shades of green in a picture than anything else. So it's a lot easier to discern that. We're going to set a binary threshold so some, not all images are binary. Um, you're going to have to edit this value a lot. So if I go to a zero value, we're going to get an error. Okay, so we're gonna get we're gonna get an error in the script, and it says it's gonna say image not binary. It's because our threshold isn't high enough. So if we go e equals 
one twenty. So twenty, it'll come back. But if we do like equals fifty, it might not even do anything. So let's try that again. Yeah, it's gonna say image is not binary. So we gotta crank it up to about one twenty. I should fix it. Alright, ignore that because we don't have any genotypes for the, for the plants yet. Alright. So now we're going to fill in the small objects. Dilating is just kind of like an image effect so that uh, it just smooths everything out. Now it's going to use these contours to find the object. So if it has like a huge contour in the image, it's going to single it out and label it an object. And now we're going to mess with this region of interest. So in step 10, it defines an ROI. So we're going to look at the images shown. So let's see what we got. Region of interest. So let's see how we can edit that. So that's a pretty big region of interest. So that region of interest is probably going to pick up something out here. And it's probably going to pick up this, but we don't want it to pick up that or anything else out here. So let's go ahead and fix that. Two thousand by three thousand. Let's see what changing this to five hundred does. Let's control that and let's say let's go ahead and view that last image again. That might do us some really good. Let's go ahead and pin that to the side. Okay, so if that's changes real quick. 200. Yeah, let's go ahead and make that 500. Let's close that out. Let's see what it does. Right. It's moved it over a little bit. So we need to shrink that. Let's go ahead and bring that last image over. Crap. Bring that over. Bring our code back out. So that's with 500. I mean, that's cool, but. So now we're going to have a run with a problem. We're going to make this box small and we're going to have to adjust everything again. So let's try like twelve hundred and we're going to say the width is two thousand. See what that does to our file. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to run again. Gotta have fun, you know. Got to save our stuff so that didn't do anything. Got to fight these computers, man. Sometimes I think they will us. We're decoders.
Now you see that has made our thing so much smaller. All right, and that over. Let's go back to some code. Come a thousand. Okay. Last time, and then we're going to move on to something else. Check save. Run command. Caffeinated beverage break. You know how it is. Do random shit. Um. Okay. Let's check our image. Close but no cigar. All right. We're gonna move on. All right. So we're gonna see what that did in our code in the rest of the way. So let's read the rest of the code. Okay. So after we set the binary thresholds, we're going to fill in the small objects and speckles and deadlift the image. And after we find this region of interest, we're going to keep the objects that overlap the region of interest and the ones that are outside of that we're not really going to do anything with. Um, and then this function takes an image with multiple contours and clusters them based on the user input and clusters just a way of saying like this region, this region, this region, this region. Um, and then the last few statements are just our output path. So let's go ahead and view like the rest of the statements. So eventually you'll get an image that kind of looks like this. Or like that. So there's really not much more to expect because our region of interest wasn't that vast and we didn't get everything we wanted to. If you want, you actually have to kind of overlap your region of interest a little bit. So I would actually probably make it around this. Get a cup, get about 300 megapixels out or have a 300 megapixel border. So it's kind of like screen printing um, when they taught us how to screen print or when they taught us to make screen printing ideas. Uh, we always had to have like this little border or if we ever were trying to make a business card, we'd have to have like this border around our whole area. So like even though we were given like this piece of paper to draw something, we'd really only have like an eight by four section of area to work with that we would know that the screen printers wouldn't mess up and then we'd have to base our designs around that. So kind of look at it like this, you have to debase, you have to base your designs around um, your pictures and how your code responds to it. So just be agile with everything. And that's the end of today's video. Thank you.